glittering lifestyles, extravagant mansions, and the allure of fame, celebrity homes promise a unique kind of luxury. Yet, even the brightest stars sometimes find their opulent properties surprisingly hard to sell. Think million-dollar bathtubs, bizarre design choices, and price tags only a celebrity-sized bank account could handle. These homes can linger on the market for years, despite the initial flash of star power. From sprawling compounds gone stale to quirky abodes that miss the mark, it turns out that fame doesn't always guarantee a quick real estate transaction. So, why do some celebrity homes become white elephants on the market? Are they truly overpriced, victims of niche tastes, or simply cursed by bad timing? Watch till the end to uncover the fascinating stories behind the celebrity homes no one wants to buy. With a career filled with both financial highs and lows, 50 Cent's Connecticut mansion mirrored his own turbulent fortunes. Purchased in 2003 from boxer Mike Tyson for $4.1 million, 50 immediately poured additional millions into renovations, transforming the property into a monument to excess. Yet, in 2007, when the rapper, whose real name is Curtis Jackson, first listed this 51,757-square-foot behemoth, the asking price was an astonishing $18.5 million. That ambitious price tag signaled his confidence in the home's value, a confidence the market didn't seem to share. Over the next 12 years, the mansion became a fixture on the real estate scene, with its price steadily dropping. There were simply no takers willing to pay such a hefty sum for a home so heavily customized to another person's lifestyle. 50 Cent's grand vision didn't translate into universal appeal. The property's sprawling 17 acres, 21 bedrooms, 25 bathrooms, indoor pool, nightclub, multiple game rooms, and other over-the-top features proved more of a burden than a selling point. The home became an echo of 50's past success rather than a symbol of a potential buyer's future dreams. Perhaps in a bid to finally offload the property, 50 Cent cut the price dramatically to $8.5 million in 2015, followed by further reductions that eventually landed it at $495 million. Yet even these seemingly more realistic prices couldn't lure a buyer. Finally, in 2019, news broke that the mansion had finally sold for a mere $2.9 million. This represented a staggering 84% decrease from the original asking price and a significant loss for the rapper. While the buyer's identity remains shrouded in secrecy, one thing is clear. 50 Cent ultimately learned the hard way that celebrity glamour and personalized extravagance don't always guarantee a successful real estate deal. Moving from opulent estates to chic penthouses, our next celebrity property on the struggle bus is Jennifer Lopez's Manhattan abode. Unlike 50 Cent's challenge of overly personalized taste, Lopez's penthouse struggles highlight the difficulty of unloading a unique high-end property. For nearly four years now, this luxurious slice of New York City has been a fixture on the market, much to J.Lo's frustration. Back in 2014, she snapped up the property for a cool $2016 million. Three years later, brimming with confidence, or perhaps a touch of Hollywood optimism, she listed the duplex penthouse for a staggering $26.95 million. This hefty price tag hinted at her belief that the property's unique features would justify a premium price. Unfortunately, the market wasn't quite as starstruck. So what exactly is this A-list real estate albatross? The answer lies in the Whitman Mansion's crown jewel, a sprawling 6,500-square-foot masterpiece. Beyond the impressive interior space, a staggering 3,000 square feet of outdoor terraces offer breathtaking views of Madison Square Park. Imagine kicking back with a morning coffee, iconic New York skyscrapers framing your breakfast nook. Pure celebrity living, right? The luxurious features inside are equally impressive. 12-foot ceilings create a sense of grandeur, while Italian marble bathrooms exude elegance. A state-of-the-art smart home system adds a touch of modern convenience. But therein lies the rub. These features, while undeniably luxurious, cater to a very specific taste, 
It's a penthouse designed for a buyer who craves a unique combination of lavishness and a touch of the historic, all nestled in the heart of Manhattan. Perhaps the biggest factor hindering a quick sale is the price tag. While Lopez might have initially envisioned a bidding war fueled by her celebrity status, reality set in by 2019. Faced with a lack of offers, she was forced to swallow a price cut of $1.96 million. Even with this adjustment, the penthouse remains one of the most expensive listings on the market. So, why is J. Lo so eager to shed this Manhattan crown jewel? Whispers suggest focusing on her West Coast life with Bo Ben Affleck. With a sprawling Hamptons estate and a luxurious Bel Air mansion already in her portfolio, the penthouse might simply be an unwanted extra. Whatever the reason, one thing's clear. Even for J. Lo, selling a high-end niche property in a competitive market can be a real headache. While other celebrity homes languish, it seems there's a flicker of hope for Erica Jane's Pasadena estate. Remember Erica Jane's Pasadena mansion? The one with the red silk bathroom and the chapel straight out of a period drama? Well, after a year of lingering price cuts and legal entanglements, it seemed ready to disappear into real estate history. That didn't take long. Let's step back in time. Listed initially at a sky-high $13 million, the mansion quickly became a testament to the perils of celebrity pricing. As months turned into a year, those luxurious features began to feel more like liabilities than selling points. Was anyone willing to pay a premium for Erica's over-the-top style? The lack of offers spoke volumes. Perhaps even more off-putting were the legal shadows. Girardi's financial crisis loomed large, casting doubt over the sale process and scaring off buyers wary of a messy bankruptcy deal. Yet, against the odds, a buyer finally emerged, scooping up the property for $8 million. A bargain considering the original asking price. You'd think the new owners were eager to turn it into their dream home. But hold on, there's a twist. Just four months later, the mansion is back on the market, this time as a rental for a whopping $38,000 per month. It seems the buyers, Tao Jun and Peng Tao, are treating the Pasadena Palace as an investment rather than a residence. So, what's it like inside? The photos tell a story. The mansion boasts over 10,000 square feet of living space, including a grand living room, formal dining room, and even, yes, that infamous chapel. While the personal touches seem to be cleared out, the sheer size and historical details remain. The dilapidated pool, however, hints that the property might need some TLC. Why the quick flip to a rental? Perhaps the new owners are hoping to cash in on the home's notoriety while waiting for the perfect buyer to come along. Or maybe they were counting on major renovations and realized the costs involved. From Pasadena drama to Florida fizzles. Celine Dion's waterfront mansion seems destined to be another celebrity real estate flop. This Jupiter Island estate is pure extravagance. Think 5.5 acres, a private water park, multiple pools, and enough space to comfortably house a small army. It even boasts famous neighbors like Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan. Sounds incredible, right? Yet this slice of paradise has been lingering on the market since 2013. The original asking price? A jaw-dropping $72.5 million, even with hefty price cuts, it currently sits at $38.5 million and still no takers. So what's the problem? For starters, even the mega-rich have budgets. The sheer price tag limits who can even consider this place. Plus that water park, fun to visit, a nightmare to maintain. Imagine the monthly upkeep costs. Then there's the lingering question mark over those price drops. Buyers get suspicious. What's wrong with this house? And let's not forget Jupiter Island, while exclusive, caters to a specific taste. Celine's place might be a bit too flashy for even the most discerning billionaire. Celine Dion's mansion is a fascinating case study. It proves that even with star power and over-the-top luxury, selling a unique property in this price range is a gamble. Will the perfect buyer finally emerge? Or will this mansion fade into real estate legend? Matt Lauer's Hamptons House 
a hot property, in all the wrong ways. Strongheart Manor might be stunning, but its association with Lauer's fall from grace has left a serious stain on its desirability. This place boasts all the Hamptons luxury you'd expect. 12 bedrooms, a private pond, even a basketball court. Yet, even with a hefty price cut, $43.99 million down from $44 million, buyers are steering clear. The problem isn't just the price tag. Lauer's disgraced reputation casts a long shadow over this property. The allegations of sexual misconduct that led to his firing from NBC have created an air of unease around the mansion. It's hard to imagine hosting parties or raising a family in a place forever linked to such a scandal. The Hampton social scene is built on exclusivity and reputation. Lauer is now persona non grata among the wealthy and powerful who frequent this area. Potential buyers likely fear the social stigma of owning the Matt Lauer house, the whispers, the awkward conversations. To add fuel to the fire, reports suggest Lauer is in desperate need of cash. His extravagant lifestyle hasn't adjusted to the reality of his lost income, and he'll likely owe his ex-wife a hefty divorce settlement. Will someone eventually take a gamble on this tainted mansion? Or will Lauer be forced to leave the Hamptons behind for good? One thing's for sure, his infamous, where in the world is Matt Lauer? Catchphrase might take on a grim new meaning. Imagine the ultimate basketball fantasy, Michael Jordan's sprawling Highland Park mansion, a regulation-sized court, a swanky cigar room, an infinity pool. It's got everything an athlete or a super fan could dream of. Those iconic 23 gates, pure MJ flair. Yet this monument to basketball greatness has been sitting on the market since 2012. So what's the problem? It starts with the price tag. That initial 29 million ask was stratospheric, even for Jordan's legendary status. Price cuts have brought it down to a still hefty $14.85 million, a nod to his jersey number, but that's a serious stretch for the suburban Chicago market. Then there's the Jordan factor. This mansion is more than just a house. It's practically a museum dedicated to his airness. Finding a buyer willing to live inside a monument to another person, no matter how famous, isn't easy. Could that larger than life persona actually be scaring off potential buyers? Location also plays a role. Highland Park isn't exactly a hotbed for multi-million dollar ultra-customized estates. Buyers seeking that level of luxury tend to gravitate towards flashier coastal locations. Plus, those $135,969 annual property taxes aren't exactly pocket change. Will MJ's mansion eventually find its match? Maybe a die-hard superfan will swoop in, ready to embrace the Jordan legacy. Or maybe market realities will force a more drastic price adjustment. Like a nail-biting basketball game, the fate of this house hangs in the balance. James Bond might be a master of escape, but Pierce Brosnan is facing a tricky real estate mission of his own. His $100 million Malibu mansion, inspired by his time filming Tomorrow Never Dies, has been languishing on the market without a buyer in sight. This isn't your standard beach house. The Orchid House is a sprawling 12,500-square-foot homage to Southeast Asian luxury. Think carved teak gates imported from Thailand, a private spa, and even a custom-built sandy beach for the kids. It's more like a five-star resort than a family home. Brosnan initially bought the land back in 2000, flush from his Bond movie success. It took a decade to build this dream home, but now that the kids are grown, the Brosnans have their sights set on a new adventure in Hawaii. So, why the lack of offers? The price tag is a major hurdle. Even in star-studded Malibu, $100 million is a jaw-dropper. Plus, the home's unique style might be too niche for most buyers. It's hard to compete with the sleek, modern mansions that dominate the California coastline. Could this mission end with a price reduction, or will Brosnan stubbornly stand his ground? Like any good Darrow 07 film, this real estate drama is full of suspense. Will a super-rich buyer swoop in with a surprise offer, 
Or will the Orchid House become a relic of Brosnan's Bond-era past? Frank Sinatra loved his Palm Desert getaway, yet the Rat Pack legend's former home has had a surprisingly hard time finding a new owner. Villa Maggio, perched high in the hills above the Coachella Valley, has been on and off the market for the past 15 years. Sinatra commissioned this retreat in 1967, seeking a secluded escape from the spotlight. It's named Villa Maggio, after Angelo Maggio, his Oscar-winning character in From Here to Eternity. Think of it as his personal Rat Pack oasis, complete with all the essentials for legendary entertaining. Nestled on a sprawling 7.5-acre lot with panoramic views, the mid-century compound exudes vintage cool. The main house boasts five bedrooms, six bathrooms, and classic touches like stone walls, multiple fireplaces, and exposed wood beams. There's also a separate guest house with three bedrooms and a pool house with two more bedrooms, plus luxurious saunas. Imagine pool parties, Sinatra crooning by the piano, and Hollywood stars lounging by the resort-style pool. The property even includes a tennis court and a helipad for those dramatic A-list arrivals. This place was built for a lifestyle most of us can only dream of. Location, however, is the likely culprit behind its lengthy time on the market. While it's only 20 minutes from the shops and restaurants of Palm Desert, Villa Maggio feels a world away. Sinatra cherished the privacy, but modern buyers might crave a little more connection to the action. Despite multiple price drops, the home remains stubbornly unsold. Will some Sinatra superfan finally swoop in, ready to embrace both the home's unique history and its isolated charm? Forget sleek penthouses and sprawling ranches. Derek Jeter's former New York retreat is a true original. Known as Tiedemann Castle, this lakeside estate is a quirky blend of grandeur, childhood nostalgia, and head-scratching extravagance, and its struggle to find a buyer is almost as fascinating as the property itself. Let's step inside this stone-walled world. Built in the early 1900s, gutted by fire, and lovingly restored, the castle sits on a sprawling four-acre estate overlooking Greenwood Lake. Inside, the 9,000-square-foot main house reveals a billiards room, a bar fit for entertaining, guest houses, and a pool house. But wander outside, and things get even more peculiar. There's a stone waterfall and a miniature Statue of Liberty replica. This place isn't just about luxury, it's steeped in Jeter's personal history. His grandfather was adopted by the Tiedemann family, who once owned the estate. Young Derek spent countless summers exploring this unique property, leaving an undeniable emotional connection. So, why the struggle to sell? For starters, there's that initial $14.8 million price tag. Even with reductions, it remains a niche investment in an area where typical homes are a fraction of the cost. Then there's the style. Castles aren't exactly a hot commodity in suburban New York. It takes a special buyer to see past the medieval facade and appreciate the history and potential. The upcoming auction adds a whole new dimension to this real estate tale. With a minimum bid of $6.5 million, the goal is to attract more potential buyers and create a sense of urgency. Will someone finally fall for the Tiedemann Castle's quirky charm? A mix of childhood dreams, baseball legacy, and architectural oddity? Picture this. A sprawling main mansion, 20 bedrooms, a whimsical design straight from a fairy tale. Sounds amazing, right? Except John Travolta's been trying to sell this place for nearly three years, and it's just not happening. What's the deal? Let's step back in time. Travolta and his late wife, Kelly Preston, fell in love with this quirky property back in 1991. Fellow Scientologist Kirsty Alley played real estate matchmaker, and the rest is history. They transformed the once spooky house into a vibrant family wonderland, tailor-made for Christmas extravaganzas with their huge extended family. The problem? The house is pure Travolta Preston style, Think flower-patterned wallpaper, antique furniture, and a playroom that looks like something out of a storybook. It's more cozy grandma chic than sleek celebrity pad. 
and that's likely scaring off potential buyers. It's not just the decor. While the 48-acre estate is stunning, the home's location on Islesboro, Maine is a niche market. Buyers looking to drop five million probably want a bit more buzz than this quiet island community offers. The emotional factor can't be overlooked either. After losing Kelly to cancer in 2020, it makes sense that Travolta might no longer feel the same connection to this house filled with so many memories. So, what's next for this main mansion? Will Travolta finally find a buyer who appreciates its quirky charm and unique history? Only time will tell. Mary J. Blige might be the queen of hip-hop soul, but her real estate reign has been a bit rockier. The Grammy winner has had not one but two New Jersey mansions languishing on the market, proving that even musical icons can stumble when it comes to selling luxury homes. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Back in 2001, Blige snapped up a Creskill mansion, Think Jim, Pool, the whole nine yards. It recently reappeared on the market with a hefty $2.75 million price tag, an audacious move considering it didn't sell the first time around. Is Blige hoping for a real estate miracle? But wait, there's more. Her Saddle River estate is a whole other story. This French-style behemoth took a decade to sell. Blige initially bought it for $12.3 million in 2008, only to see it go for a painfully low $5.5 million in 2020. Talk about a major loss. So, what's going on? Blige's homes are undeniably luxurious with home cinemas, basketball courts, and all the swanky amenities you can imagine. Maybe the super specific locations in quiet New Jersey towns just aren't attracting the right buyers. Or perhaps those hefty price tags are scaring people off. The rumors of financial troubles don't help. Reports of unpaid taxes and hefty spousal support payments paint a picture of a star who might be desperate to sell. This could explain the bold pricing strategy for her Creskill home. Will Mary J. Blige finally score a real estate win? Will she find buyers who appreciate her unique taste and are willing to pay top dollar? Or will her mansions become symbols of a celebrity real estate slump? Stay tuned, the drama continues. Think Wolf of Wall Street excess, alligator handrails, and a real-life race car driver. Meet Alan Wilzig, an entrepreneur whose wild NYC townhouse saga is almost as dramatic as the movie that was loosely inspired by his life. This isn't your average real estate story. Wilzig's home first hit the market in 2014 for an eye-popping $44 million. Not because it was worth that much, but because he wanted to see if a billionaire would bite. Talk about a gamble. Over the years, the house got progressively tamer. Goodbye, alligator handrails, as the price went down and down and down. The townhouse finally sold for $1,265 million, a fraction of its original ask. Wilzig still made a profit, considering he bought it for $335 million back in the mid-2000s. But what a ride! So what sets this townhouse apart? Think a 32-foot-wide great room an onyx fireplace, a spa, and, of course, a private garage. It was initially decked out in true Wolf of Wall Street style, but later toned down in hopes of actually attracting buyers. Why the years-long struggle? Price is one factor, but it's also about location. This is Tribeca, not exactly a billionaire's playground. Wilzig himself admits he's spending more time at his upstate New York farm, complete with a private Grand Prix racetrack. In the end, Wilzig landed a decent deal and is now looking for a swanky NYC rental. But one thing's for sure, his real estate journey is a tale as unique as the man himself. Unlike Alan Wilzig, who was willing to gamble on a sky-high price tag for his NYC townhouse, Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell took a more cautious approach with their Malibu beach house. This A-list couple's real estate journey is our final stop and it's a story of patience, perseverance, and eventually finding the right buyer. Hahn and Russell, Hollywood royalty, with decades of experience making audiences laugh and swoon, have been together since 1983. Their Malibu love nest was a Balinese-inspired retreat, a complete departure from the hustle and bustle of their film careers. Built in 1978, 
the house underwent a stylish renovation in 2005, transforming it into a 4,200 square foot haven. Picture this, floor to ceiling windows framing breathtaking ocean views in the master suite, a private balcony for morning coffee with a million dollar panorama, and a detached guest house for visiting friends or family. There was even a screening room, perfect for movie nights under the stars or catching up on their own classics. So why would they ever want to leave this paradise? The answer is simple. Sometimes even celebrities grapple with the fickleness of the real estate market. Their beach house first hit the market in 1995, a staggering 18 years before it finally sold. The initial asking price a whopping $14.749 million. While the location and amenities were undeniably top-notch, the price tag might have scared away potential buyers. Over the years, Hahn and Russell made adjustments. The price tag underwent a strategic retreat, dropping steadily to reflect market realities. Perhaps they were also open to the idea of downsizing, ready for a new chapter in their lives. Whatever the reason, their patience paid off. In 2013, the Malibu Dream House finally sold for $9.5 million. This celebrity real estate saga reminds us that even the most idyllic properties can take time to find the perfect buyer. Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell's story proves that location, luxury, and a touch of Hollywood magic aren't always a guaranteed recipe for a quick sale. But with the right approach and a little flexibility, even a celebrity beach house can find its happy ending. Did these stories surprise you? Let me know in the comments which house you found the most shocking. If you loved this peek behind the scenes of the rich and famous, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell.